Hello and welcome to the live screening of A Bus, A Hammer and A Fountain Walk Into A Bar. The link to the film script can now be found in the comments section of this live stream. This surreal and joyful short film amplifies the voices of the young, the old and the non-human to help change our perspective of the city. This anthology film follows the lives of the main characters in a multi-species urban environment in the not-so-distant future. Written and directed by and starring OS, Clausen, Molly, Caitlin and Jake, who will all be responding to any questions on the YouTube live comments during and immediately after the screening. So, without further ado, please sit back, relax and enjoy the show. Activist, legend. A plant my plants ought to be. Gorilla gardening granny. I've been locked in for days, months. I gotta get out. My kitchen's too tall, my bathroom sounds like a demon. Broken lights, exposed pipes. This managed decline got me mad. I gotta get out. Gorilla gardening granny. My love must be a kind of blind love I can't see anyone but you Take your time, I don't have a choice How does your body feel? It hurts, 
Five of you, my tree. Me, you, me, together for eternity. I'm leaning into your warmth, safe and calm beneath your bower. Our love will blossom like a springtime flower. You energize me, my eternal sunshine. You bring me joy like a flowering dandelion. Being with you, I feel no pain. I need you more than you need rain. from my Stop! home I was too big disrupting the earth with my rhizomes then this lady came along hand in hand song in song I plant the seeds of life around the high street I spread my boreal life throughout the high street I'm not alone I'm not alone anymore And so With the beat of my own drum I'm set free To become Oh so free I found joy Oh so much joy I'm talking finally I'm being who I want to be So splendidly Red buses. I remember them well. Yeah, my mum often talks about growing up getting a bus. How she watched the world go by. Yeah, the vantage point from the red buses is the best. True. Um, oh, I guess you see the streets of London all day and all night. Um. Hey, what did your mum tell you about big red buses when she was younger? She said you could see all sorts from the top deck of the bus. How streets are the most public of spaces. She said you could see people you recognise from school outside the chippy. You see someone drunk and slumped on the bench. You see an argument between two friends. You see the blue lights, you hear the sirens. You see a couple kissing. You watch the delivery man, backlights flashing. You see the bikes on the floor outside the corner shop. You see a pair smoking their marble golds out of sight of the office. You see the woman begging by the cash point. You see the kid having a tantrum. You see friends laughing in their car. You see a group of boys sharing a spliff. 
You watch a granddad pushing a buggy, a toddler kicking its legs, desperate to go faster. The bus rattles past. Ah, uh, those were the good old days. Good. This is so much better. Since teenagers have had the right to vote, the adults have had to listen to us. We are now live outside the polling stations with London's young people and non-humans who have been given the right to vote since the last national election. Now their votes count. It's not just the adult people that get a say. They vote for the people that represent them. We build this city with the young people! Sounds like some exciting development for the youth of Hammers of London. Back to the studio. <laughs> I know these changes are necessary, but now I'm redundant. No, you're not. You've changed with the times. Today's buses don't just take you from A to B. You can learn and make things on them. My bus is coming. I've got to go. Bye. Bye. House streets are the most public of spaces. The buildings stand beside each other. The people brush past, taking respite on the wooden benches. The trees sacrifice themselves for us. The tools speak louder now. They build our cities with us. They now populate the buses too. What can you see on the bus? You see the students listening, scribbling. You see the students soaring, sanding. You see the bus stop full of passengers, clambering on board, wanting to learn by doing wanting to learn by making, wanting to learn outside of the classroom? Or is the bus now a classroom? It moves between schools, it moves between subjects, it moves beyond the curriculum. Passengers side by side, face to face, tables in between. The bus is filled with conversations, congregations. People talk, people listen. To listen is an act of power. Who listens to you? What can you see from the bus? You watch a granddad pushing a buggy, the toddler kicking its legs, desperate to go faster. The electric bus glides past silently. into one size fits all education system shouldn't be made to feel isolated alternative education methods need to exist that provide long-lasting community-led projects for spaces with young people at the heart Ugh. I wish we could be together I love 
being able to put you at the heart of functional one-to-one -one design and build projects within your community. You're the best. Real ownership and being able to hold you like this has helped develop and build upon uh, my confidence and has equipped me with social and practical skills. I think you and I have something special. Yeah. I think community-based participation and collaboration, collaborative projects even, need to become common practice in everyday life and encourage just as much as, if not more, the so-called teaching our company gets at school. Yeah. For this to happen though, I must get my friends who are equally as accessible as I am and not shy to hang out with more young people. You're the best! I agree. People must look towards highly convenient and accessible participatory culture methods producing more prosperous places to live that leave no one behind. Yeah. What the f It used to be me, star of the show, up front, centre stage, gushing with joy, emanating health and vitality. I was the welcomer. You know, visitors would travel from far and wide to see me. Oh, and of course you had the locals, the regulars. Every morning, same time, a quick dip before work, a nod to me on the way. Oh, it's funny, isn't it? The little things you remember. Like Mrs Perkins, who ran the old veg stall on Rye Lane. She was, of course, an early riser. Had to be in order to unpack the stall, lay out each vegetable just so. I'd hear her talking about this to Mr Bennett, explaining to him the meticulous detail in which she planned her layouts. This always conjured up great, beautiful patterns in my mind. And sometimes I would long to see outside of the park in which I was born and where I'd live out the rest of my life. The day the pool died, well, I didn't see it coming. Certainly I'd heard the rumours. I noticed fewer of the locals turning up for their routine slots. But hey, people were busy. It was 1987 for God's sake and me. Well, I was 64 years old. No spring chicken, some might say. So I was waking up a little later in the day. 9am instead of the old 5am starts. But yes, the water in the pool was looking a little dirtier than usual. But it was autumn and the leaves always muddled up the pool. Still, I never expected her to die. I watched on helplessly as they filled her in. Spade full of dirt thrown onto her body. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust, I thought. It was a gruelling and seemingly never-ending process. The funeral. She was big, and I mean big, 50 metres long, 25 metres wide, as you can imagine how long it took, how much dirt it took to fill her in. Me, I couldn't wrap my head around it. Your best friend. 64 years spent together, born on the same bloody day. People would say they're inseparable, those two. There'd be no fountain without the pool. No pool without the fountain. A real pair, you know. 
So can you imagine how it felt? How vastly my loneliness was deepened when one day I woke to see a dozen men stood all around her, shovels at the ready, fury in their eyes in the way that men often do. I think back to that day a lot, wondering if there was anything I could have done to stop them. Wondering if she knew she had a limited time left in the green paradise we claimed as our own. Deep down, I knew that I couldn't. After all, they would have never listened. Plus, I'm anchored here. I couldn't move even if I wanted to. My concrete belly holds me down. After that, I felt completely without purpose, isolated and alone. It was especially tough throughout the winter. What with the dark mornings and the short days, I barely saw a soul. And the few people that did pass trampled over a grave without a second thought, like they'd completely forgotten her already, which made me even sadder. In time, surprising me in the way that spring always does, the muddy patch which marked her body started to grow into grass. She started to become one with the park, until eventually you could no longer see the line where she ended and our home began. In a way, this pleased me. Even if no one else remembered, I would always know she was there, my own shining secret. Buried underground now are the memories of long summer days in the sun, eased by her presence. I hope that when people see me, they know that I am not just one, but half of two. For some time after the death of my beloved friend, my role within the community changed quite significantly. I became more hidden from the eyes of the public day by day. The men with the shovels returned, this time to form a man-made mound facing me. I could only see this as a personal attack as it blocked my view toward Dulwich and hemmed me in further. As my water had dried up too, the public decided to fill me too with earth. Although nothing beautiful grew from me like it did the ground. Instead, I pulled out litter, heaps of the stuff, crisp packets and cans and bottles and chocolate wrappers and baggies. They stubbed out their cigarettes on me, emptied their guts on me. It seemed the trees create the perfect shelter for outdoor sex, and so they threw their filled up condoms onto me. One fellow even stuffed 20 pounds into me. Unfortunately, sir, I cannot grant your wish. At the ripe age of 93, I think it's fair to say I've witnessed my fair share. I've watched this area change, yet I have stayed constant. My purpose changing, yes, but inside I have remained. These days I am a piece of art, apparently. My costume has returned, but in a different form. I am cloaked in white like a Greek god, a blank canvas. I am tended to, nurtured. My innards are filled with mass of a different kind, the giving kind, the growing kind. And so my costume changes, blooms, and once again I gush with joy. I'm connected to other parts of the park that I will never see, yet I know they exist. They see my mop of white hair through the breaks in the trees. Visitors amble from them to me. My distant peers, some old and some new, all with stories to tell, I'm sure. believe that I'm looking at the Kianda mermaid. I grew up looking at different paintings of how she could be and she looks even more beautiful in person. Hello Maros. Thank you for your compliment, but I am not very popular now. People used to send offerings to me in the past. I spent years studying you. One of my students made an experiment to please you. I'm planning to publish my work to make you popular again. The student was doing some jump rope. Then he got thirsty and wanted to drink some water. But as soon as he thought about water, he felt the environment was a bit strange. He kind of felt the presence of the mermaid Kianda swimming along the canal. As a way of respecting you, he decided to take some water from the canal, filter it, drink half of it, and give the other half back to you. And then the flooding stopped. 
I can't believe it. My powers are coming back as people respect the water more. Yes, it worked. The flu did not only stop here, but also where my heart lies, in the country of Angola. We please the Kianda mermaid and the flooding waters are controlled. The waterways of the world are all interlinked and connected because of you. I didn't think my powers could work again. Yes, but the science is important too. The more people filter and store rainwater, less rainwater would be on the urban pavements and reduce the risk of flooding. The coming together of science and myth is crucial for maintaining an ecological balance. You truly are a key endologist. You gave me the power to do this. I am the bridge between science and myth. How true you are. In the end, it is about protecting nature and connecting humans for a better, multi-species future. Together we can clean the seas, rivers and oceans, and my powers run through the currents. To please me is to please the water of the world. Humanos need to realize their influence and power in this. You and other Kiandologists are mastering this. You must continue this important work. Thank you.